In June 2011, Rural Enterprise Development Services Limited was contracted by the Conservation Farming Unit of Zambia to carry out on the ground implementation of the Conservation Agriculture Regional Program in 10 districts of Uganda. The RAIDS CAP field team comprises 25 field officers and three field supervisors who have been placed in the 10 districts of operation. Our approach involves a system of village-based training that enables participating farmers to develop practical skills vital for replicating and adopting conservation agriculture on their own fields. This hands-on and practical-based training and demonstration approach alongside knowledge sharing between farmers is the most effective way to persuade farmers of the very real benefits of conservation agriculture opposed to conventional methods. We work to link farmers with reputable input dealers and other private sector partners to help ensure farmers have access to high quality and genuine seed, fertilizer, herbicides and seed tools. Such linkages are vital as fake agro-inputs have been a big problem for many farmers. Conservation agriculture is a climate resilient, environmentally sustainable and profitable farming technology. Farmers who use this method of farming benefit from improved yields and crop performance as well as reduction in labor costs. The three pillars of conservation agriculture are minimal tillage, crop rotation and retained crop residues. The planting of leguminous trees within fields can also be interposed on conservation agriculture minimal tillage systems. Conventional ploughing is wasteful in fuel, time, labour and soil nutrients. The continuous churning of soil across the whole field creates soil compaction and leads to excessive erosion, which in turn causes soil nutrient depletion, water logging during excessive rain, poor root development and a reduced crop. In conservation agriculture, a minimal tillage method is used, either hand-dug precision basins or the establishment of permanent rip lines from animal draft, also referred to as a tramline system. Basins are 35 centimetres long, and the basins and rip lines are 15 to 20 centimetres deep. This is twice as deep as conventional methods and breaks through the hard pan created by conventional ploughing. This allows increased water harvesting, filtration and stronger root growth. After backfilling soil, lime and fertilizer can then be spread with precision, saving on both cost and environmental impact. Seed is then sown at precise rates, for example with maize and sunflowers, three seeds per basin or every 15 centimeters with ripping. Here another saving in cost is made. This precise sowing also means the seed is placed where it needs to be, directly over the fertilizer or manure. Ripping and basin digging can be prepared during the dry season, meaning planting can be done in a timely manner as soon as the first rains fall. Using a low toxicity herbicide on weeds during pre and post harvest periods enables a farmer to effectively control weeds. Weeds are already reduced due to minimal tillage methods and farmers that cannot afford herbicide can use a hoe to remove weeds. Retained crop residues protect the ground from rain splash and wind erosion, retains moisture and subdues certain weed species. Over time the residue cover decomposes and fertilizes, in effect recreating forest floor conditions and improving soil fertility. Crop rotation methods also improve soil fertility through nitrogen fixing and can break disease and pest cycles. This graph uses carp field data to illustrate the effects of conservation agriculture for farmers who till using hand hoe, looking at yields per acre alongside the cost of production per kilogram. After the carp program began early in 2011, yields consistently increased from the introduction of these conservation agriculture technologies. At the same time, the production costs decreased. The same trend follows for maize, soya and bean crops. Therefore, these farmers are increasing their profits immediately and consistently. 
conservation agriculture is climate smart. When the practices are correctly applied, yield increases happen from the first season and remain consistently high. Integrated agroforestry, the planting of leguminous trees within fields, fixes nitrogen in the soil. The technique is climate resilient and enables crops to better withstand excessive dry or rainy seasons than conventional systems. My yield has increased. Formerly I used to get about 300 kilograms of maize from this quarter acre field. But when I put the whole basin in practice, I got 500 kilograms and yet the crop was badly hit by weather. In this half-acre field, I used to get 200 kilograms of soybean, but last season, using conservation agriculture, I got 600 kilograms. My yields improved dramatically. Before using conservation agriculture, I got 375 kilograms from half an acre. After implementing conservation agriculture, the first season I got 816 kilograms and the second season 1,160 kilograms. I no longer spend a lot of money in production. I spend less at the end of the day and get more money from the sales of my yield, which has helped me to buy a bull. REDS has linked up with government extension workers and other institutions to create conservation agriculture awareness. They went ahead and invited us to some of the uh, few days and we were really impressed. We went back and talked to these people of REDS and told them we wanted to start using this method. I must say I have really benefited since we came across RETS, which works in collaboration with NADS, and they started giving us additional advice in maize production. Here at Ibuga, at Ibuga Uganda Prison Farm, we are very delighted to work with RETS in support of the farming technologies. Among others here, what we are practicing is conservation farming using the Reaper technology, which has lifted our productivity per area from 18 bags from an acre to nearly 30 bags from an acre. Secondly, it also saves time, so we are able to work in a short time to produce more food to put on the plates of our inmates. And lastly, of course, it goes and gets into integrated in our rehabilitation programs on the unit. Now we produce enough food to start having lunch at school. We are now feeding both pupils and teachers. I have realized the performance of the pupils has also greatly increased, and the teachers have enough time to follow their timetable the way it is set. Oxen can be difficult to find and expensive. This often means I experience late planting. I am now expecting higher yields from this first season. You can compare the beans I have grown here on the 30th of March to my neighbors planted on the 21st. You can see my crop is bigger than the farmer next to me. Recently, they also told us to ensure that we plant trees. And that is one idea that is helping us so much. When you look around, when you move around these places, people are planting several trees. Though other programs came in, but they were not so much close to the people. But these ones have paid close attention to the interests of the, the, the farmers. In the Hilly Queen district, soil erosion is a significant problem. Rivers are red from the runoff. The Conservation Agriculture Regional Programme has reduced this erosion of soil dramatically, so much in fact that local families have started being able to collect water for domestic use. I have been able to make developments to my home and I have purchased a solar lighting system for my house. I have been able to increase my acreage now, as I speak, we have six acres of maize that we are producing. Conservation farming really pays. For the few seasons I have practiced it, I've really seen a great change in my life and the family members at large. I have finished building my house, I bought a pig, which you can see lying there, and a few goats also. You have enough time for your family members because you spend less time in the field. The good yields help you have food security in your house and you'll be able to do whatever you want with the money. Pay school fees, pay for medical bills, and so on. At Reds, we are excited to see the success realized over the past two years. So far, the Conservation Agriculture Regional Program has reached over 40,000 farmers across Uganda, of which 20,000 have adopted conservation agriculture practices. By the end of the program in 2015, we will have 35,000 farmers practicing conservation agriculture. We hope the coming years will enable us to continue working with 
farmers across many other parts of Uganda and to spread this farming technology as wide as possible, benefiting communities across the entire country. Thank you.